بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته My name is Tara Khalid I'd like to welcome to our program here at Shahada TV getting closer to Allah getting to know your Lord getting to know Allah the creator and sustainer of all things the one who everything happens according to his knowledge and with his permission nothing happens without his knowledge not even this or the blinking of an eye can happen without him being aware and conscious of it and without his permission and it is difficult for many people to understand or comprehend because they've been taught something in conflict to the fact that there's one and only God who is the creator and sustainer of all things and there's nothing that has happened in the past or nothing that will happen in the future that can be a reality without his knowledge and without his permission think about it and then look at your relationship with the lord where do you stand if you get some idea about the magnitude of your lord then where do you stand ask yourself well, where am i in this where do i fit and if your person says well i don't know oh you know i don't fit anywhere then you need to really reflect and find out you don't want to be one of those people who's kind of left out and lost out You have to choose. We all make choices in our life in one way or another. Some good, some bad, some positive, some negative. This is normal. But we need to make a choice in relationship to our hereafter. And that is based on the proper knowledge. And let's see what Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter 35 verse number 23. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is only those who have knowledge among the slaves that fear Allah. So Allah is saying more or less that to have the real fear of Allah you need to have knowledge you need to have proper knowledge. People said, "Well, brother, Allah is, we believe God is a loving God." Yes. Allah's mercy far exceeds his punishment. But that doesn't mean there isn't punishment. The 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 hellfire is not a joke. The the, the descriptions of hellfire are not so vivid for no reason. Allah does speak about the hellfire so many times in the Quran that it's just empty talk. And we hope and we pray for Allah's mercy and we strive and we should strive to obey his commandments so we not be among the people who go to the hellfire. Yes, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist and it doesn't mean that I can just shake my head or snap my fingers and I won't be one of those people because I think I'm okay. No. Not at all. Not at all. Not any more than you could see the ceo of a major corporation just because you think you're a good guy well, i'm a good guy and i like this guy and i like what his corporation does so i'm just going to go up to his headquarters in a 100 story building and tell him my name is so and so and i like your work and i want to come and see and tell you that good luck do you think that could really happen would that really happen very rarely We're not saying that it can not it could but it's very rare so we all know this as an example and this is on a human level which is very limited that man who or woman who is a ceo of this huge corporation physically is no different than us and actually the difference between him and us is very minute And people says well, what do you mean he says well regardless of how he's living now what his bank account is and so forth and so on how famous he is his accomplishments there may be a big difference between us but when he goes in the grave what will be the difference if if depending on the side he lives in he may have a very expensive casket he may have one of very expensive suit clothes like this okay i will not be in the casket i will be put in the ground in a simple white cloth. Okay? But that expensive suit after some time, what would be the difference between it and my white cloth? If you see, if you understand what I'm saying. And we hope and we pray that Allah will be pleased with us and that the grave will be a peaceful place for us. It will be like a garden of paradise for the believers. We believe this. And it's all dependent on Allah's mercy. So what about a man he had this status but he didn't have this reality. 
So we have the intention to bring this reality to everyone's doorstep. That everyone who chooses will have the opportunity to change his or her life before the angel of death comes and takes their soul, which none of us is aware of at this time. And some of us may be very close to it or more close to it than others, but we're not aware of it right now. So where does our present condition, what is our present relationship with our Lord? Will we be able to make that transition from this world to the next? Or will we be among the people who are stuck in this existence, believing that this is the most, this is paramount, that this is the top, this is the pinnacle of our life. <laughs> it is very limited, isn't it? If we really look at the frailty of the human being, it is very limited. And the law has promised us eternal life. Would you, does it make sense to sacrifice eternal life for something that is temporary and we do not know how temporary, meaning we don't have an idea of when it will be extended or if it will be extended or we will be exterminated. So if we look at this and make a comparative analysis between where we're going and how we're going in our life, what should we be doing today? Not tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promised. We're here today. We don't know if we're going to make it for the rest of this day. So today, what are we doing? And I ask everyone out there, ask yourself now, today, what am I doing to get closer to my Lord? If I don't believe, then what am I doing to find out if my belief is correct? Because if I'm wrong, which you are, <laughs> then you're in very serious trouble. Your dilemma is like being in a dark pit with no light, where you can see no beginning, no end. And that's minimal. So think about your present condition. What is it that you need to do to change it, to improve it, to make it better, to make it that which Allah is pleased with? to strive to leave behind that which causes displeasure to Allah. The person says, well, I don't know what Allah is pleased with. I don't know Allah. So first thing, get to know Allah. That's what we're talking about. Take the first step. Go to the Muslims. Sit and talk to them. Talk to your turn blue. It doesn't matter. Keep going and talking and listening. Keep reading. Keep praying. Keep begging Allah. Ask Allah, show me, show me. Please show me the truth. Make it clear for me. Make it distinct for me. Show me, you know me, you created me. Take me away from the false belief. Give me that belief which is true, which is evident, which is plain, which is clear. And believe that Allah will give it to you. And watch and see what happens. Allah will not mislead you. But most of us, we will not do this because our hearts are not pure. Both of us want, well, you know, the Muslims, uh, I like the Muslims, they're good people, but they do some of those things which are very strange to me. And, you know, I, I like to do, you know, I have my own little thing over here that I like to do. And that's generally the case. God says, well, you know, I have these guys, you know, we like to get high together. And we've been getting high together ever since we were teenagers. And we just get together like once a week. And we get together and we do this and we do that and we have a great time. And the girl says, you know, yeah, you know, me and my girls, the same thing. We, we all in the same group, same sorority. We're all in college together. And now we're mature women. So we get together every so often and we have cocktails and we have a little party among ourselves and we enjoy ourselves and have a good time. What's wrong with that? My question is that you're having these gatherings seeking pleasure from the things of this world which are limited and whatever pleasure that you get from it is limited. And you're sacrificing your eternity for something that is temporary. And because it is convenient for you and it satisfies your desires and your circle is satisfied with that and you're 
maybe you feel the inclination to move away from that, but at the same time, you, you feel responsible and accountable to your old friends or family members. And those people are keeping you locked into disbelief. And some people said, well, you know, I've been doing this all my life and my father before and my grandfather, you know, this is our family and this is what we do. And we do it like some, we said the prophets of old said the same thing in many instances. These are the things of our families. This is what they did. And we do this because of that. It is not a new statement. It is a very old statement. But what did they do? They made transition. Ibrahim alayhi salam, his father was the idol maker for his people. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his tribe were the people who were proud because they had the key to the Kaaba. Inside they had 360 idols. This was their claim to fame among the tribes, that they had the key to the Kaaba. They were the ones who took care of the place where the idols were. So this gave them what? In their society, that gave them status. They were very proud of this. Now you have a man who's telling them the idols Destroy the idols, there's only one God. So it's in total conflict with their belief system, which they have been, which has been instilled among them for generations. But does that make it right because the people have been doing wrong for generations? Does that make it okay because they've been doing the wrong thing for generations? No, it gives us responsibility and accountability to seek knowledge and we get proper knowledge to teach that same knowledge to people so they can understand that they won't continue to go astray. That's the accountability that we have. That should be the concern that we have about humanity. Not that we want to perpetrate confusion. We, we don't want the people to be confused. We want the people to have clarity. We want the people to have clear choices. We want the people to understand the distinction between this world and the hereafter. And that if you sacrifice everything in this world only for the things of this world, Allah will give it to you. Allah will give you this world. But would you sacrifice this if you knew that you had real abundance of wealth coming? No one would. No one. Everyone says, look, I have really have that. Endless amount of wealth is coming next year. Okay, fine, I'll just leave this for right now. I have to leave this to get that? No problem, that's worth it. I can measure that. But we're not measuring based on monetary system. It's based on our understanding what Allah has promised us in the future, which we know what Allah says is true, but where is our firm belief in this? And let's see. Muawiyah, Rayyanah reported, the Prophet said, when Allah wishes good for someone, he bestows upon him the understanding of religion. When Allah wants good for someone, in this collection by Bukhari and Muslim, he bestows on him the knowledge of religion. What is the proof of this? The proof of this is that the people who Allah loved most were his prophets and messengers. What did he give them? Did he give them worldly possessions? Did he give them just the knowledge of worldly things and business? No. And some of them doing business, but was that their forte? Their focus? No. Their focus was how to bring the people on to the way of belief in the one and only God, how to worship him only, for the sake of their own souls and salvation. And they face turmoil in many instances because of this, simply because of in conflict with their society and other societies in which become influenced by this reality. So we see today the condition of humanity. We're looking at the heart of our creation and it's being spoiled by these devices, part and partial, and not only and also by bad conduct. That today, bad conduct is becoming acceptable. And even on this particular instrument, it is being used in such a way, even for children, and even children themselves, becoming examples and speaking of bad conduct and encouraging other children to be disobedient to their, uh, their parents, to not respect those in authority, to just be at, what we call at random. And we're seeing the result of this now. Where it will go, Allah knows best. But what we're seeing right now, we're seeing this transition in an overpowering transition in many ways. 
and people doing things which in many instances we didn't see before, or it was in an era what was distinctly dish different than what we're seeing today. And as a result of that, we don't equate the two things. We, we equate that historically with barbarian, barbarians, as an example. We don't look at those people today and say, these are the modern day barbarians. They're educated people, but they're committing the same acts of the people of the past. So what is the distinction between them? If we say those people were uneducated, barbaric people, uncivilized. So what is the excuse for the people today who? They are not of those, none of those factors. They are highly educated. They're using very sophisticated devices. What is the distinction between them? The distinction is what? The true belief and understanding of their Lord and fearing that they will, they will be held accountable, that Allah will hold them accountable for their deeds and actions that will not escape. That's right. People say, well, I understand you, but I say, well, this is a distinction because now how many people in prison around the world, how many people have been executed? The people are not afraid of being executed for their efforts anymore. You see some of the people that ask him, do you want to make a, a last statement? The guy has nothing to say. You know, he says, well, I did the crime, I'm doing the time, whatever required to satisfy that. It's no problem, I can do that. So you have this kind of mentality today of people who they don't mind committing crimes. They, they take the chances because they're thinking about their future. Not realistically, but in terms of their understanding, which is extremely limited and when you relate it to the truth. So you have to ask yourself, what is your status presently? In Ibn Masood, Rene Anor, reported Prophet Sallallahu said, envy is permitted only in two cases, a man whom Allah gives wealth and he disposes of it rightfully, and a man to whom Allah gives knowledge which he applies and teaches. It's collected by Bukhari and Muslim. So which one are you? Ask yourself that question. Which, what is your present condition? What choices are you making today? Today, not tomorrow. What choices are you making today? The choices that you're making today, will they impact you in your future? Will they be a benefit for you in your future? And when I talk about your future, I'm talking about the real future, in your grave, not in this world, in your grave. What you're doing today, is it going to benefit you in your grave? So if you don't know, or if you think negative, then you need to rethink, take your time, and ask Allah to guide you to the truth. My name is Tara Khalid. I'd like to thank you for joining us here at Sharjah TV on getting to know Allah, getting closer to your Lord. And we hope and we pray by Allah's mercy and grace that our people will be blessed by the light, this pure light of guidance which only Allah can give. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.